So as you've seen in our FPS charts for different reviews, video cards, CPUs, so forth, we report FPS in three metrics. There's the average FPS, 1% lows, and 0.1% lows. Uh, it could also be called 99th percentile, 99.9 .9 percentile. But what do those things actually mean? I've discussed this kind of briefly in an Ask GN episode. We, in every single article with a review, we post this information, and that's always in the, in the link in the description. But just to kind of make a dedicated video to this, 1% lows and 0.1% lows, that's our way of conveying frame times at a means that, uh, that I think is a little bit easier to read in comparison to the average FPS. So what are frame times? Frame times and frame pacing, this is something that Scott Wasson, formerly of Tech Report, really heavily drove as a new metric to review products. And uh, when I saw the post years ago, it really made a lot of sense to me, so we adopted it. What he was doing is sort of frame time testing, he called it, and this looks at the average or overall uh, millisecond disparity between frame A to frame B. Uh, so if you're looking at, say, frame number one versus frame number two, maybe there's an eight millisecond difference between them if you're on crossfire or something like that. And then maybe frame number two to frame number three, there's a 20 millisecond difference. This creates a very perceptible uh, sort of latency to the user that you can pick up in your gameplay. It'll feel like something has slowed down. Uh, you might use colloquial terms like frame drops or stutters. Uh, it can introduce tearing. It really, it just depends on the game and what's going on. But that's kind of what frame times are. It's the milliseconds between frames. And this number is not necessarily shown in average FPS numbers. That's why we've moved away from a pure average. And to that end, uh, using just an average will sort of obfuscate these occasional low dips in your frame rate that may be seen in real gameplay as a frame drop. So this is a really good example of this. This is a, we've got a tray of CPUs. This is a G3258 Intel Pentium CPU. And the G3258 in some of our reviews uh, using this product, it does pretty well until you really throw a heavily multi-threaded game at it. And as an example, uh, in GTA 5, the AMD 760K will actually perform on average worse than the G3258. It's about 10 FPS lower average. So in our testing, I don't remember the exact numbers off my head, but it was something like 76 versus 65 FPS average, something like that for 1080p with the settings we used. But the 3258 is actually worse or was worse at that time with those settings, and that's because the, uh, the 3258 would introduce this stuttering as you play. So as you're playing GTA with this particular processor, there will be uh, very jarring and hard sort of stops in the frame output. It's a latency. And this happens because the frame time in milliseconds between one frame and the next will occasionally spike, maybe 50 milliseconds, something like that. And what matters here is more the offset than the actual absolute value. So if you've got really consistent frame time, say every frame is 20 milliseconds apart, it's really, it's not fantastic, but it's not bad. And as long as every one is 20 milliseconds apart, then it's really not that big of an issue because it appears fluid. But when you start having a disparity in your frame times, maybe one frame is 16 milliseconds, the next one is 24 milliseconds. Now we get some stuttering and it gets worse as you increase that, that disparity, the percentage uh, difference between frame times. So with the 3258 in that example, what we're seeing is a high average, but it's actually kind of unplayable because occasionally there'll be a really hard hit to your frame rate where it might stutter or frame drop or whatever word you want to use, lag, for a fraction of a second. And it's long enough to really, if you're trying to aim at someone and shoot them, uh, you get that stutter, suddenly you're not aiming at the right place anymore. So that's where this testing methodology came from. But what are the 1% lows and 0.1% lows? Well, we take this, the, the frame times, we take the overall uh, test period, which is 30 seconds. We look at 30 seconds of frame data. We look at every single frame output versus the frame time and we create an average FPS, and then I pull from that 1% of the, the, the slowest 1% of frames. And then we pull, again, the slowest 0.1% of frames. And the reason this is done is to show very clearly 
uh, what the converted FPS value is of those very slow t frames. And that's because we don't want to use a minimum. A lot of older testing methodology would use a minimum and a maximum frame rate, which really, very honestly here, is totally useless because if it is actually a minimum and not some sort of uh, normalized value, the actual minimum is an outlier and may not be representative of actual gameplay. If we ran a game with 10 test passes, we might see minimums that have a range of 100 FPS, which is a massive range, totally unreliable and unusable as a metric. But if we average the slowest 1% of those frames, suddenly we have something that is more normal, repeatable, representative of a real everyday gaming experience. So that's where the 1% and 0.1% loads come from. What do they mean? Well, uh, generally, if you have, say, uh, the Fury X this is another good example. A product like the Fury X performs pretty well in average frame rates. But in some games, and we have charts to show this, uh, in some games, the 0.1% will be so low that we might actually recommend something like even a 390X instead. And in the case of that particular example, it may be because of the 4 gigabyte versus 8 gigabyte disparity. We saw this in our RX 480, uh, 480, 4 gigabyte versus 8 gigabyte test. And that test shows that, yeah, the, the averages can be pretty close sometimes, maybe worst case, they're a couple percent difference. But in some games, like Assassin's Creed or uh, Black Ops or Mirror's Edge, occasionally we'll see such bad low frame rates, the 0.1% value, that it really it might be like 6 FPS or 20 FPS as opposed to the 8 gigabyte card doing a double value to that or 60% higher value to that. Uh, and, and that is where you would really clearly see an impact in gameplay and where we as a review outlet would make the recommendation to buy the one that has a more stable frame output or a more reliable, repeatable frame output than just an average. So the average values don't tell the whole story. If you see a high average value on a product, you really need to look at the low values as well to determine if it's actually any good for what you're doing. Because just a high average, uh, averages will, by nature of an average, collect all the data, divide it, and that can kind of smooth over any imperfections that as a user would be perceptible, but as a metric might not be. And then if you're looking at frame times in milliseconds, and we show this for Ashes of the Singularity, uh, frame times, the thing to pay attention to is once there's more than an eight millisecond swing between one frame to the next and frame time values, uh, that begins to become perceivable. So if you have uh, 16 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, really not super noticeable in fluidity of the, the sort of frame rate output. But when you have eight milliseconds to 24, it's starting to become noticeable, or sorry, 16 milliseconds to 24. Eight milliseconds to 24 definitely is noticeable. Uh, but that's, that's your value. You're looking at an eight millisecond swing to kind of become perceptible to the human eye on average. And that's a number we've gotten from talking to GPU manufacturers. So uh, that's the basics. If you want to learn more about this, I've written about it in the past. But the best article in the industry is by Scott Wasson. And uh, there's, there's no reason to kind of try and push all that info out in a video. So if you, if you really want to go deep on this, I believe the article is called Inside the Second. That's, that's the article name, a couple pages long, uh, and it explains what all this stuff is. We've taken that core concept over the last few years and refined it into something that I, I think for our audience is easier to, to read and understand, and that's by converting the sort of frame rate versus time chart where you see this spiky output that Tech Report and a couple other sites will do. We take that chart and we instead convert it into what we call 1% lows and 0.1% lows, and then we put it out in, an, in a normal bar graph against the average FPS. That makes it a little bit easier to kind of comprehend what's exactly going on. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, we will be pointing everyone to this video in the future when the question in comments is asked, what is 1% lows? That, that's your answer. So uh, as always, thank you for watching. Check out the channel, subscribe to get more information, and Patreon link to the post video if you want to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.